It's easy with a new Brownie movie camera by Kodak. Outdoors, indoors. All year long, you'll get wonderful movies in action and color. Hey, it's Michael Rosso, Film Photography Podcast, here today to talk to you about Kodak Kodachrome. Back in the day, it was the color film, perhaps the most beautiful color film ever produced, as you can see by these home movies shot in the 19, early 1960s by Neil Cole, scanned, done recently by the Film Photography Project. I received so many emails about folks who either find Kodachrome that is not developed or buy an old roll of Kodachrome and shoot it today in 2020 and beyond. And what you're looking at right now are the results. And the results look like this because Kodachrome was a format of film that is now completely defunct. The film is not manufactured anymore and the processing... The actual technical chemistry process to make Kodachrome color no longer exists. So what to do? Well, as you can see, Kodachrome developed as black and white. You're looking at the worst results that we have seen. Well, actually, the, I should take that back. The worst results we have seen have been completely black. What you're looking at are the results of processing Kodachrome as a black and white negative. The only way to do it is as a black and white film. The results you're going to receive really depend on how old the film is and how the film was stored. The film you're looking at right now uh, was stored much better. Therefore, the results are so much better. Still not amazing compared to what the original color should have looked like. But the best that can be recovered in the year 2020. Now this footage was shot, looks to be somewhere around the late 1970s. And the results are actually pretty decent in my opinion. So much better results. Once again, done in-house at the Film Photography Project. I've received many emails where folks tell me that they've shot... Kodachrome film that they recently picked up at a garage sale or on eBay. I really do not recommend shooting Kodachrome film now. Uh, the results you'll get are, are so hit and miss that it's probably not worth the money. We're now looking at Reel 3, which was shot in a Yashica 8 camera. This looks to be uh, the early 1980s. And once again, the results are not too bad, but they're not great. Now, if you must shoot a roll of Kodachrome, now, if you bought a roll and you feel like you must try it, then I really urge you to shoot at a much, much lower ISO. And we're going to see in just a minute some footage that I shot on side two of this roll we're looking at. So here was the scenario. I purchased a camera on eBay. The film was in the camera and only half of the roll was shot. So it being double eight, regular eight millimeter, I flipped the roll and I shot the rest of the film here at the Film Photography Project. And here is the footage. This is the same roll of vintage film that was in the camera. I just flipped it over and started shooting with it. I highly, highly recommend that you shoot it at an amazingly low ISO. So this footage that you're looking at right now was shot just a few weeks ago in the year 2020 at ISO 3. So if you feel you must shoot Kodak Kodachrome, and I'm suggesting you do not, I think you should consider shooting it at ISO 1, ISO 2, or ISO 3, a very low ISO. And as you can see, the results are still okay, probably the best I've seen this complete roll. But still nothing to write home about because you're still getting not a terrific picture quality.
And that's really it. I just wanted to put this little video together so folks can see what old Kodachrome will look like processed as black and white. It's very romantic to shoot Kodak Kodachrome, and I understand the appeal of it. You know, it was such a cool, awesome film, and who doesn't want to shoot Kodak Kodachrome? But for the money you'd have to spend to get it processed and scanned, you have to ask yourself, am I better off just shooting brand new film stock? We are one of the few facilities in the world that are offering Kodachrome processing and scanning as black and white. Filmphotographystore.com I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can always pop me an email, michael at filmphotographyproject.com. Thanks so much. We'll see you next video.